got to get a face flat enough to go through the planer. Well, I cleaned up nicely right at an inch and seven eighths thickness. So that's what we're going to use. I've got them stickered up and we'll let them rest for a while. Well, seeing as I no longer have to worry about the width of my jointer, I think I'm going to go with a five inch wide board for that. And I'm just going to trim down one side and flip it and trim down the other side and flip it and just work it into this five inch and that way my table saw is making progressively straighter cuts and I suppose it works better when it's plugged in otherwise it's a pile of work We made a pass down each side, so let's bring it to five and a half. Except we get closer than that, bring it down to five and a quarter or so. coming out nice and square so we can do two more cuts My last cut will be just a little bit stronger than 5 inches. Give me enough to hand plane off and get the burn marks out. Leave a little bit of burn. Underpowered saw going through thick maple. Got my joiner paint set very fine. And we'll just try to clean it up just a bit.
Oh, we run a gauge line at the five inch mark. And we are really close. Of course, it's exponentially harder on the long boards. But when you put a gauge line in, and you see that, you know you've made it to your gauge line. Oh, there we go. Four pieces of material for the stretchers. All dimensioned, still slightly over length. I guess we can start working on some joinery. Cut a piece of scrap, clamped it in there so my legs are sitting nice and square to the table. That just to make sure everything will fit properly. And I've cut my short stretchers to length. So they're coming halfway in. There's a seam right there and the seam right there and I've got it pretty much oriented the way I want. So the depth of my tenon is going to be there. And here. This is my show face. And that That's my top. I'll get that marked out. And the marks we made, we can transfer them around for the depth of the tenons. Mistake, I should be going off this face. The faces that I've marked, I always want them to keep in mind that they're the reference faces. showing up very well. Yeah, you can see it. Come right around and map. I've got a new toy for my birthday. A Veritas double marking gauge. And I've set the distance to my 7 8 chisel. So if I come off my show face here again, my marked face for reference, I've put it that way and put it that way so they line up nicely. Now I can mark out my tenons. So now that we've got our tenons marked out, we can figure out where we want the mortises to be. And I am going to have my shelf just a little bit higher than what most people make them. So I've got a stick that I've cut off at 20 inches. Give me my baseline for my mortise. I 
can just reference off the bottom of the table. So my mark is the top of my stretcher. So if I come in half inch that is the top of my tenon. And my tenon is four inches so that's the bottom of my tenon just darken that up a little bit my marking gauge is still set the same about an eighth inch reveal on that. So I'll come in one eighth of an inch. Is that going to be enough? It was a quarter inch going to be nicer. I think a quarter inch. So right to there. So I'll loosen up the locks. It should go right there. side of my mortise. Four mortises marked out, four tenons marked out. Nothing left to do but to go for it. Didn't take me long to realize that I've got this nice big slab to work on here. Why don't I work on it? And besides, it gets rid of that annoying metallic noise that the legs on the other one have. And I can sit down. Maple sure is hard stuff, but it's working pretty clean.
So on a single pass, I'm almost down to depth. As you can see, just with a normal chisel, each stroke goes down just a little bit farther. And I'm still away from my lines, so I can use the waste part to pry against without screwing anything up. We've got four mortises chopped out. It took a lot of work. That maple is hard stuff, but it cuts pretty cleanly. Let's get these legs back in their sockets and see what happens. I've got to do this scene just for Dave over at the Danbois Wilderstead. He's alluded to the fact that he watches my videos and says I'm the Bob Ross of woodworking. So this is for you, Dave. There we go. Some happy little mortises. Now we can work on some tenons. Well, the first thing we have to do is mark out which tenon goes where. So I've got the stock laid out there, and that's leg one. So this will be tenon one. And this one over here is three. So we'll put a three on there. And we'll do the same on the other side. I guess step one is we should darken up these lines. So my old eyes can see them. And step two, make a little landing strip on the waist side in the corner. And the tenon saw. That seems a little high for me. Get it down for my more comfortable. from the top. Start dropping our heel now. Make this a bit easier on ourselves. Following one line again, down the bottom. And usually I cut both of them at the same time, but for illustration purposes. well curved, the saw will follow it.
just reinforce our kerf line on the waist side again. the saw it should be oh, oh look at that look at that I don't know if it shows up or not but there's that mark we made with our stick before I do want that to be the top of the stretcher in there. That gives me from there to there. I'll we'll just take our rotor plane and just clean up any of the little discrepancies there. face all nice and parallel to that with the rotor plane find our little tick marks
That's freaking awesome. Well, the other set was a little bit more difficult, but both short stretchers are mortised and tenoned in. Woohoo!